Norwegian Lapland, home to 2,000 Sami herders whose livelihood depends on 200,000 reindeer. For 50 years now, the reindeer police, which was set up to help the Samis, has patrolled this vast territory. Without them, conflicts would be legion. These are no ordinary police officers. They're experts in prevention, the diplomats of the tundra, the unwilling witnesses to an endangered world. Patrol unit P2. For almost a year, we followed this unit for thousands of kilometers, come rain or shine, in all kinds of cold weather. It's springtime. The patrol unit set off from Alta at the crack of dawn after being called out. Half a day on the road. A few days ago, a tragedy occurred in the area. 40 reindeer died during the transhumance. The circling vultures act as guides. Is this the worst spot on the migration route, then? Yes, sir, it's a funnel. And since they started building the road, it has only got worse? Yes, in the past, it was a lot easier for the reindeer to come down here, to get to the water's edge and then go around it. It was a natural path. Whereas now, the entire route is raised. And also, there is less and less space every year. It's not just here, though. It's everywhere. But with all the building, the snowmobile trails, the chalets, it's becoming increasingly cramped and also harder and harder. The next one is there. Five five two seven one. This is a female. And in fact, the herder has lost two animals, not just one, because there's also a calf here. That's its leg. So the herder has suffered a double loss. As you can see, they erected a fence down there. You can still see the post, but this snowbank we're standing on swept away the fence, and so there was nothing to stop the reindeer from climbing up and then tumbling down. The herders have asked for compensation from the roads agency. But so far, nothing has been done about it. Samis versus Norwegians. It's an ancient conflict. One that Steinar Bidner, who's a bit of a historian, knows well. It's pretty certain that the people who came here around 10,000 BC were the ancestors of the Sami. We Norwegians arrived much later, after the development of farming. You could say at a push that we were the immigrants here, not those who lived here first. I came to Alta in 1979 as backup for the local police force. The worst thing was night patrol duty. That's what... Being outside and dealing with violent people, with drunks, there were murders, all sorts of things, drunken brawls. That's why, and because I wanted to be outdoors. So when a position became available in the reindeer police, I joined immediately. For 12 years now, Steinar Bidner, the chief of patrol unit P2, has been traveling the roads of this vast territory covering some 48,000 square kilometers. Along the coast and on the islands lies the lush grass of the rich summer pastures. Further south, sandwiched between the Sami villages of Kautokeno and Karasjok, is the lichen-covered ground of the sparse winter pastures. At the end of the Second World War, the retreating German troops had pursued the scorched earth policy in Lapland. The people were starving. Faced with an increasing number of reindeer thefts, the herders asked the authorities for help. And in 1949, the reindeer police was set up. Its mission then, as it is now, was to prevent conflicts associated with reindeer herding. The little I knew about the Samis, I learned from a Sami classmate who I spent quite a lot of time with. But we didn't know much about them. 
Basically, if you're from the south, you don't know anything. Southerners just know there's a group called the Sami, and that some of them herd reindeer. A lot of people wonder whether they still live in tents. But most Samis actually live in Oslo now, and they live like all other Norwegians. Located over 200 kilometers from reindeer police headquarters in Alta, this refuge is one of a dozen scattered across Lapland. The officers use them as temporary bases when they go out on five-day patrols. They need to be as close as possible to the herders. It will soon be the highly sensitive season when the females give birth in quiet spots hidden from view. Patrol unit P2 has set off again. Hours on their snowmobiles, ensuring that Norwegian walkers stay well away from the herds. They maintain a discreet presence, but it's an effective deterrent. That's the paradox of the reindeer police. The distances are so great that it's practically impossible for them to be at the scene of an incident. So they have to anticipate, seek out the herders, gather information. Aren't those signs of grazing? That's Karasjok field. He's going to go that way, below the mountain, I reckon. He won't cross the lake. After three hours patrolling, the officers find the herder they were looking for. He's in the high-risk area. If a female takes fright when she's giving birth, she will abandon her offspring. For the herder, this would be a financial loss. Have you been bothered by any snowmobiles? No. Not yet. Not yet, eh? The reindeer that this herder follows by snowmobile during the transhumance for days on end are his only source of income. The Sami have the exclusive right to herd these reindeer as part of the effort to preserve their traditional culture. The animals are sold for slaughter. The antlers and hides are used to make handicrafts. An entire fragile economy is dependent on these timid animals. The building is a problem. The road goes from Alta all the way to the dam. It has meant a lot of people have come to the mountains and built chalet or campsites. If they'd built the dam over there, the road wouldn't have reached here. Norwegians, what do they want? It isn't fair they come and play on our pasture land. It would be like us tearing around the farmer's land on quads or snowmobiles. You see those tracks up there? They aren't allowed to drive like that. If the reindeer police weren't there, there would be plenty more like that. It is they who have the right to be here. The reindeer have the right to the mountain. Nobody else. Unlike the rest of Norway, the sparsely populated expanses of the far north are owned and managed by a regional government. But in the harsh climes of Lapland, where man is barely tolerated, nature has its own rules. This is the reindeer's kingdom. It makes the decisions. It follows food sources. The herder follows the reindeer, and the police follow the herders, trying to keep at a distance from the herds. No. The reindeer are way over there. It isn't a problem. Near Stabursnes. The day grows long. The temperature drops. It's minus 10. The wind picks up. The officers have already traveled 80 kilometers today. But as the patrol unit looks for a final herder before returning to the refuge, it accidentally gets too close to a herd. The traditional roles are reversed. It's the herder who stops the police in their tracks. It's such a crappy pasture now. We tried to go that way, 
No, you mustn't go that way. You have to go by the south side. There are no two ways about it. It's hell around there. There's so much crappy grazing land. The climatic conditions are lousy. He's going where we weren't allowed to go. Is that him heading? He's heading towards his gumpi. It's the same trail that we followed. It isn't true we took the wrong track. First, the wind is blowing in a northerly direction, so the herd is drawn to the north. Yeah. Into the wind. And also, it's springtime, so they're drawn. Towards the coast. Towards the coast. It's one of the unhealthiest herds of all. You better be careful with his herd. Make sure it isn't stressed, as it's so weak. That's what comes of having had herds that are far too large with such a limited amount of pasture land for too many years. Two days ago, I chased away a herd from here. When the reindeer come in the night, they do loads of damage before we turn up in the morning. It's the same story every year. And the problem in Finnmark is, there are far too many reindeer for the amount of grazing land available. You can see it in the mountains. There's nothing left there. As for the reindeer police, all they seem to do is crack down on illegal snowmobiling to make sure riders stick to the authorized trails and wear helmets. That's all they're interested in. The authorities are to blame for the situation because they haven't managed to reduce the number of reindeer. We farmers are watched for everything. We can't have more animals than we have feed for. And also years ago, the authorities said there shouldn't be more than 75,000 reindeer in West Finnmark, but there are probably about 150 to 160,000. There isn't enough food for them all. On one side, there are the herders. On the other, the farmers, the hunters, and the tourists. And the reindeer police are in the middle. Some Samis say they're our police. Seven two-man patrols scattered in the four corners of Lapland. These officers are far from everything, even from our cliched view of the police. You just have to have been through police college. But it's better if you have a few years' experience, because you don't get the action you're after as a young officer. When you start out, you expect stuff to happen all the time. That's why it's often slightly older officers who apply. In the four years you've been in the reindeer police, have you arrested a lot of people? No, nobody. Not a single person. So That says a lot about the way we work. We're ready. We're going to Smursfjord first. Johannes Guttorm will be there. And we'll see Per Ivar on our way back on Saturday. Then we'll go to Börslev and I've arranged a meeting with Balavar. The Sami people have a more old-fashioned and traditional view of the police and of authority in general. It's an abrupt change when you come from a regular police force where physical confrontation is a regular part of the job. Here, there's a lot more discussion, negotiation. It's how people used to behave in Norway two or three generations ago. Steinar and Bjarte have set off for another week of patrol duty. It begins with an unpleasant yet routine mission. 
about 50 kilometers from North Cape, a reindeer has been run over. Quite a few get run over, and there are a lot of drivers who don't report it. They don't even bother to stop. Well, this is a very exposed corridor. On this road here, and especially up towards North Cape, about 100 reindeers get run over every year, and maybe half go unreported. For Patrol Unit P2, these springtime missions will continue, dealing with accidents, supervising the transhumans. They must be ever vigilant. Some herds are very weak because of the poor pastures of the past winter. They had to be transported by truck. These reindeer will travel by boat from a fjord near Alta to the lush pastures of the Northern Islands, where they'll spend the summer, a respite. The herds will not return until the end of the autumn, where some of their number will be sent to slaughter. That's the period when there's an increased risk of incidents. New missions await the reindeer police. Autumn is off to a bad start. A major dispute has been brewing for days. The reindeer police step up their patrols. Two large herds risk getting mixed up. Friday, the two police officers attempt to mediate. Yes. Were there reindeer there all summer? The herder with whom Steinar is trying to negotiate by phone is 50 kilometers away near North Cape. He wants to upset the established order, release his reindeer and move them on so they can benefit first from the better pastures along the migration route. But this worries the Utsi clan, who are already busy rounding up a neighbor's reindeer that have strayed into their herd. They saw each other up there. They've decided, and if they don't manage to come to an agreement, they'll release the entire herd. When? Sunday morning. Maybe what he's saying is true, that there is no more grazing land over there, and that's why he has to move them. There are too many reindeer. He's one of the herders who will be affected if the herd is released. It's bloody freezing and the whole system stinks. It's so much work. I have to keep an eye on the fence, the fence over there, and then drive, round them up, and on top of that, there's the reindeer from Magaroya. We don't have the capacity, not a chance. 
I dread to think what'll happen if they get mixed up. It'll mean a lot of pointless work. I don't care about that. I just want to know what you're going to do for me. Because I don't want a war. I don't want to fight with people. The government, the lawyers, say that nobody can do a thing. Nobody can do anything? Doesn't it say somewhere that the reindeer from Magoroya Island aren't allowed to pass on our side of the fence? Isn't it written somewhere? That's what they say. We don't know. It'll become a new Gaza Strip. It's pointless, totally pointless. We've never done that. Mikhail did it once. He turned up unannounced and almost fired at me. I wish I'd reported him now. What am I supposed to do now? You can't do any more than us. Wait. Wait and see. I'll call if... Yes, if you hear anything, call us. I'll call you. Yeah, because I've spoken to Anders Niels. He's in the enclosure down here. He doesn't want you to come this way. How long will it take you to get here once you've released the herd? The same day you release your reindeer, <laughs> I reckon they're just idle threats. I don't think they'll dare. Saturday. The issue of the Magaroya reindeer still hasn't been resolved. Given the distances, the telephone is an indispensable tool. The two officers know most of the herders in the area, and their refuge has become a crisis control room. The herder who is on Magaroya Island over there has some 8,000 reindeer. About 10 days ago, he made his reindeer swim across the strait here, to this peninsula. And there are fences holding back the reindeer here. But as the reindeer have already been grazing there for about 10 days, there is hardly anything left to eat. So the reindeer are beginning to head towards the fence because they want to go south and start their migration. But the problem is the herders who have their reindeer on the mainland are earmarking their calves now. And they have a herd of 10 to 12,000 reindeer. And they don't want the other reindeer to pass this way until they've finished marking their calves. And if these two large herds get mixed up, I can well imagine the conflict lasting for years. We've tried to mediate between the two parties, but I don't get the impression we've succeeded. Now they're trying to settle it amongst themselves. We're staying in the area, but we can't go up there because that could be interpreted as taking sides. And we definitely don't want that. What a strange fate for these police officers who didn't know anything about the Sami people and who now find themselves intervening between them or acting as their spokespeople.
Things have certainly come a long way since 1979, which marked a turning point in the Sami's cause and their protest against the building of a dam south of Alta, to which Steinar Bidne wanted to take us. That's when I came to Alta, because of the demonstrations and protests against the building of the dam. I was the driver of one of the vehicles used to evacuate the demonstrators from here to Alta. I had mixed feelings, but I had a job to do. I didn't agree with the decision to build the dam. It wasn't the Sami's cause that was important to me. I basically saw it as the pointless destruction of nature. If I'd been younger, and if I hadn't been doing this job, I think I probably would have joined in myself, on the other side. The road was eventually built though, then the dam and the power plant, just as planned. But the Alta controversy also opened a new chapter in the Sami struggle. Because afterwards, the government set up the Sami Rights Committee to deal with water and land rights. And then Norway ratified the UN Convention that recognized the Sami as an indigenous people with all the rights that entails. And this has had a real impact on reindeer herding. The constitution states that the Sami must benefit from positive discrimination. And this means that the state doesn't intervene as energetically as it actually could. One consequence of this is that there are too many reindeer. And yet many reindeer disappear. They're the victims of predators. But perhaps the most voracious of all is the one the Sami called the two-legged wolf, man. As a result, the police station stores some rather unusual exhibits. Each herder has his own mark, and this book lists the marks of all the herders in Kautukeno. In most cases, either the ears or the entire head are removed. But the only way you can identify the owner of a particular reindeer is if you have both its ears. A herder can recognize one of his reindeer from a distance of 50 meters with his binoculars. But I'd be lost if I didn't have the book to refer to. Monday. The patrol unit has received a call. The corpses of several reindeer have been found between Alta and their refuge in Skydi. Illegal slaughter. A case of reindeer theft. It's typical of this season when the meat is at its best. Even if the conflict up near North Cape could erupt at any moment, Steiner and Bjarte must go and investigate. That's what Hendrik told me. But afterwards, he wasn't absolutely certain, because we're here now and we haven't found anything. OK, right, but it could be in the vicinity. It's here. <laughs> it's old. You see, the hide is dry. The head's been removed. Yeah. 
There weren't any antlers or anything. Hello, Hendrik. Hello, Hendrik. We found them, but they're old. At least a month, I reckon. But it's definitely theft. There's only the hide, no ears. It isn't worth it. We'll just record the case, and that'll be it. I reckon it was someone involved in reindeer herding who did it. Yes, when there are as many as this. It's a form of rivalry. When you spot another herd as reindeer in your herd, well, you can make extra cash if you kill his reindeer rather than your own. At a bend in the road, a breeder concerned about the ongoing conflict spots the police officers. They get talking. It's always been this way. There were rules about it, but nothing is in writing. Johan Matisse, then us, then Magaroya, then the Utsis herd, and Clement last. If it had been written down... Yes, all this would have been avoided. There's no going back now, though, once they've got the reindeer to swim across. But it'll be hell if everything blows up. It's going to put pressure on the mountain pastures, and at the end of the day, there won't be anything left for anyone. The simplest thing is to let them go ahead of you, but it hasn't come to that yet. Tuesday. The Magaroya conflict has been brewing for almost a week now. The reindeer police patrol without getting too close. That's the diplomacy of the tundra. This tundra whose many mysteries fascinate Steinau, such as this ancient sacred rock standing majestically not far from their Skydi refuge. This rock must have been used for several thousand years, and probably up until about 50 years ago. It probably dates back to pre-Christian times, when the Sami people were animists. Theirs was a religion of nature, in which mountains and stones had a soul. And in the past, sacred rocks like this one here were extremely important in the reindeer people's world. A few years ago, a large herd that was trying to cross here started going round in circles. Maybe they took fright on seeing a man move. This circular motion caused whirlpools. The reindeer were dragged towards the bottom. Panic broke out. The herders, who were watching in small boats, had to rush into this deadly circle to break it and restore calm. Fifteen reindeer drowned. And there's stories of people who have paid no heed. There was something called reindeer luck. It's impossible to define. But if you have it, your herd will be healthy and grow. You have to cooperate with your kin, with your neighbors, but also with nature and the forces of nature. Just as the officers are about to leave, they get an unexpected, unhoped for phone call. Yeah, that sounds very good. Goodbye. <laughs> there won't be 20,000 reindeer all at once. 
They've had a meeting with Clement, and he's got permission to pass. Really? When? Tomorrow. Well, it's looking good. And from Smurford, they're going to send people over to remove the reindeer and see how many get mixed up. The matter is settled then. For this year, anyway. <laughs> and they won't go anywhere near Anders Nilsutsi. After the lush grassland of the coast, the reindeer will have to make do with snow-covered lichen. It's winter, the hardest season of all. The reindeer have returned to the tundra in deepest Lapland between Kautokeno and Karasjok, where they gather on contested land on which, unlike the summer pastures, there are no fences. Some reindeer luck wouldn't go amiss. And who knows if the Samis, who've adopted Lutheranism, do not still secretly turn to the ancient forces of nature. February. Patrol unit P2 has also migrated to the heart of the winter pastures. It's minus 25. A herder has lodged a complaint. His neighbor's reindeer are grazing on his land. The officers have to check it out. Hours on their snowmobiles looking for a man on the tundra. The only marker is Gumpy. There are tracks over there. But, uh, they're old. It's hard to say. I don't think there were any reindeer here before. No. I think I can hear a snowmobile. Mikkel is over there for sure. Maybe we should have a look around and see if we can find the herder. But he's probably somewhere near his reindeer now. Either he'll come back here or he'll return to the village. So we're going to wait a bit to see if he turns up. Might as well leave and come back tomorrow. Let's hope we have more luck then. Two hours waiting in the biting cold. But just as they're leaving, their patience is rewarded. Let's see if he stops. There's been a complaint from the Karajok area. Now? Yes, that you were on the wrong side. Really? Where does the boundary pass? It goes from here, through the middle of the marshland, up to there, cutting diagonally across the water. All right. We'll show you on the map. 
It passes this way. You have this hill here. You can go that way. Take that pasture there. And it passes here, along the stream. That's the boundary of the pasture. The snowmobile trail passes here, like this. That's the trail around it. Yes, around it. So now you know. Yes, but where does the forest go? The forest? There. But the reindeer you have on this side, you'll have to move them. Okay, but there aren't a lot. Mission accomplished. Back to the refuge in the middle of the tundra. An hour and a half's drive through these precious pastures buried under the snow. The tundra of Finnmark is almost as dry as the Sahara. So, as a general rule, you get 20 to 30 centimeters of dry snow in winter, which means that the reindeer can easily dig into it and find food. But if there is more snow and more rain, then you have the snow, the rain that freezes, and you get layers of ice that the reindeer can't break. That's probably the biggest threat to reindeer herding. It's a result of the climate change. One of the snowmobiles isn't working today. Steinar sets off on a mission alone. It's a place called Fjellmbajokka. And what we're going to see is two reindeer herders whose herds got mixed up at the beginning of winter, trying to separate them. They want to move their herds on now because the pastures are in such poor condition. The idea is to form smaller herds in order to make more rational use of the pastures. I'm simply going to be there to make sure everything goes well because conflicts often arise in this sort of situation. Are they friends or enemies? To limit the conflicts of winter, which are more frequent, the government is trying to trace new boundaries between the herders. It's an unrealistic endeavor. In traditional Sami culture, there were no documents to prove ownership. The herders negotiated amongst themselves, as during this sorting here, from one year to the next. Nowadays, everyone marks his positions. Always on the lookout for intruders, one of the herders resorted to vigilante tactics. Jorn Etter will never forget Christmas night, 1989. It was a night that ended in tragedy after an incredible snowmobile chase in the most hostile of settings. 
We were over there. I was in an area where I hadn't put my reindeer out to graze before. And then he turned up. He told me I shouldn't be there, that it was his land. He was drunk. He started arguing. I was about to leave when he shot at me. Since the Norwegian Reindeer Administration started delimiting the winter grazing areas, it's been chaos. There have been a lot of threats since. Serious threats. That's someone who fired at the cabin. You could say it is a sort of warning or something like that. Jon was injured under his left shoulder blade. His assailant got a one-year sentence. It was a brutal wake-up call for the Norwegians who discovered the extent of the drama being played out in the far north. But on this inhospitable tundra, there are no angels, as these two officers know full well. More than ever, the reindeer police are aware they must provide a reassuring presence, lend an ear. If you threaten someone else for using the pastures, it isn't... But it's always been like that in the mountains, the law of the strongest. Yeah. Aren't you retiring soon? Yes, it's soon. Yeah. You'll stop all this. And move to Thailand. <laughs> yeah, sunbathe on the beach. It's time for the freezes. Rather than freezing here. Because you've had a few days of cold and frost. Yes, more than once it's got me down. Plus a bit of war on the tundra. There's more than enough war. There are plenty of things we haven't heard about. Oh, God, that's for sure. It's sort of the tradition not to ask the authorities for help. Yes, that's right. It's very much the case. You're supposed to fend for yourself as much as possible. As much as you can, but you'll always come a cropper. Yes. Reindeer herding isn't something you can do on your own. You're supposed to collaborate with the others, in your own clan, and with your neighbors, for it to work. Reindeer herding isn't just a job, it's a way of life. With the mechanization of the past 30 to 40 years, reindeer herding has become costly. And that means you need to own a lot of reindeer to make a decent living. A lot of reindeer, but for pastures whose use is increasingly contested and which are becoming harder to access in winter due to global warming. It seems an impossible equation in such an extreme environment. A bleak picture for many herders. I think the future generations may not be as idealistic. And because of that, there will be fewer herders. Reindeer herding may well disappear. I can see it taking another form in Norway, where the reindeer will be fed hay and pellets in wintertime. I think that will become increasingly common. If the number of reindeer had been massively reduced, I think it would have helped a lot.
We've always been told that you mustn't ask a Sami how many reindeer he has. It has to do with reindeer luck, because the day you start counting your herd to see how many reindeer you have, you lose your reindeer luck. You can say things are going well for you, but you can't say that you have reindeer luck, because you'll lose it if you do.